Thank you very much. Please be seated. There is nothing like the national anthem to get our patriotic juices flowing. Good morning again to everyone. I'd like to begin by recognizing His Excellency, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, GCON, who is represented by the Senior Special Assistant to the President on SDGs, Princess Ade Joke Oriolope Adefolure, who I understand would be in the room in a moment. We also recognize our dignitaries here present, His Excellency, the Governor of Lagos State, Mr. Babajide Sonwolu, who I also understand should be on his way shortly, and also the, the State Commissioners of Health, who are also joining us in a moment, the Commissioner of Health for Lagos State, Professor Aki Abayomi, and also the Commissioner for Health in Ogun State, Dr. Tomi Koka. We also recognize all the other special guests that we have in the room and we'll be trying to save some time and I'll be recognizing them as we move forward. Of course, the board members and the executive management team of Alpha Mead, ladies and gentlemen, you're all welcome to this formal launch of the Modular Healthcare Facility. And earlier today, I was just thinking to myself that health business is good business in more ways than one. Now, obviously, there is the opportunity, the business opportunity that it offers. But beyond that, as we all know, it is a critical issue in our country. And I'm always delighted to hear about any initiatives that are supportive of dealing with that issue. Before we move forward, I'd just like to address a few housekeeping issues. First of all, I would like to encourage everyone in the room to please do your best to observe the COVID-19 health protocols as much as you can. Thank you very much as you do that. The room has been thoroughly disinfected prior to your arrival. And of course, you did see all the measures that we have put in place to make you feel safe and comfortable. We also like to recognize our audience joining us online. I do understand that there is an online audience joining us. I believe it's on the Zoom platform, so you're all welcome as well. Thank you so much for your time. And you may have observed a few people in the room dressed in, if you like, the type of attire you will find in a hospital. And I would just like to warn you that these are not medical practitioners, so do not ask them for any medical advice. They're actually your ushers. So please do your best to reach out to them if you do require any assistance. We'd like to save some time. I would like to get right into it. And to set the tone for this morning, I'd like to now welcome the chairman of Alpha, the Alpha Mead Group, Mr. Mutiu Sumonu, CON, who will be delivering a welcome address to help us set the tone for today's program. I would like you to please put your hands together for him as he steps forward. I think we can do much better than that. Please, thank you so much. Good morning. the excellencies here present. And if I want to go on and on, I know I'm going to trip somewhere. So let me just uh, ride on the existing protocol. Good morning, all. I'm really delighted to see a lot of our dignitaries here present. For me, this is an acknowledgement that we all associate with healthcare in Nigeria. So I want to, on behalf of the board, management, and staff of Alpha Med Group, warmly welcome you to the formal launch of the modular healthcare facility by Alpha Med. Please, can we give a very sound Round of applause for Alpha Mid. I'm always very proud.
to be associated with this group. So Femi and his team, thank you for a job well done. For us at Alpha Mid, the launch of this product today is another confirmation that our brand promise of we care is not just a platitude. It is a living commitment that expresses our essence as an organization. This has defined us over the years and is evident in all the solutions that we bring to the marketplace. From our commitment to how over 1,000 middle to low income Nigerians, our services that create safe, secure, and comfortable places for people to live, work, and play, to delivering efficient and quality healthcare services in Nigeria and across the continent of Africa, we are always seeking new and different ways to express care to all our stakeholders. The challenges of our healthcare sector are not unknown to us all, but from whatever lens one chooses to view these challenges, whether financial, personnel, equipment, systems, or technology, perhaps the most disquieting is that of access to quality healthcare. In 2017, we established Alphamid Healthcare Management Services Limited with a goal to closely support government and private sector stakeholders to make quality healthcare accessible and affordable. Inspired by the successful launch and impact of our pilot project in Gagada General Hospital and Lagos University Teaching Hospital, Idiaraba, we went back to the drawing board to find what other societal needs we could meet, leveraging on our internationally certified processes and systems to improve the administration of healthcare services in Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, I would not like to bore you uh, with all the benefits of our facility. When we go out to do a tour of the facility, I will encourage you to please ask questions and get to know more about the functionalities of this facility. We are truly hopeful that the government and private sector can explore the different possibilities of acquiring this facility. I must state here that Alpha Mid Healthcare does not claim to have all the answers to the challenges of healthcare in Nigeria. However, we are convinced that this is one further step in the right direction. And we believe that as a key stakeholder to nation building, you will join us on this very important journey of taking quality and affordable healthcare to the doorstep of every Nigerian. I thank you for taking time to be with us on this very important occasion. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Mr. Sumonu, for that. And as you were speaking, as many of you may have observed, the representative of His Excellency, the Vice President, has stepped into the room in the person of the Senior Special Assistant to the President on SDGs, Princess Ade Joke Oriolokwe Ade Folure. Madam, thank you so much for joining us. Please, a round of applause for her. Thank you so much. We also have with us now Dr. Tomi Koka, who has also joined us. The Commissioner for Health in Ogun State. Thank you very much for your time. Much appreciated. And I would just like to run through a couple of other very distinguished guests who are with us today. 
starting with the Honorable Minister of State for the Federal Ministry of Science and Technology, Barrister Mohamed Abdullahi, who is represented today by Dr. Samuel Etatouve, who is the Director General of the Nigerian Natural Medicine Development Agency. You're very welcome, sir. Thank you so much for your time. We also should have with us um, Dr. Jide Idris, the former Commissioner for Health in Lagos State. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. I was trying to spot you in the room. Much appreciated for your time. Joining us as well today, this is really a, an initiative that the public and the private sector need to be invested in. And we're delighted to have the company medical advisor of Nigerian Breweries PLC, Olutomi Bamigoye, also with us today. Thank you so much. We also have the director of projects for Lagos State's Ministry of Health, Dr. Oduwole Abiodun, also in the room. Thank you very much, sir. Much appreciated. Thank you so much for your time. We have representing the speaker of the Federal House of Representatives, Honorable Bajabia Miller. We have Honorable Rotimi Agunsoye, who is the representative for the Koshofe Federal Constituency. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for your time. All right, so I think on that note, we are ready to, excuse me, please. All right, so as, we, as the event continues, no doubt we'll be recognizing a lot more people, but we'd like to try and make this as efficient as possible, and we'd like to now move on to a presentation of what we are launching today. My apologies. I need to get my ducks in a row. All right, so before we get into that presentation, we have the pleasure of his Excellency, the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibadu, who is represented, as I mentioned earlier, by the Senior Special Advisor to the President on SDGs, to deliver a keynote address on behalf of, the, of His Excellency, the Vice President. Please welcome to the lectern, Princess Adejoke Oriolope Adefolure. <laughs> Good morning, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I would like to recognize my brother, the former commissioner for health, Lagos State, Dr. Jide Idris. It's nice seeing you again. Thank you for being here. And I would like to also welcome the representative of the Honorable Speaker. Apologies. The Right Honorable Femi Bajabi Amela, GCON, the Speaker of the Federal House of Representatives, ably represented here by uh, their brother, Honorable Roti Miyagusoye the members, member of House of Representatives representing Kushofe Federal Constituency, also a colleague of mine. Thank you for being here. The management of, pardon me, I don't have the list of the dignitaries <laughs> here. So I'll go to the management of Alpha Med Healthcare Management Services. Thank you for bringing this innovative 
concept to Nigeria. Uh, we, are, we are much appreciated. And I want to also thank my dear sister from Ogo State, the Honorable Commissioner for Health, Ogo State. Thank you and welcome to Lagos. Let me adopt the already established protocol and to welcome everyone to Lagos, the center of excellence, the state of aquatic splendor, the heart of Nigeria and the commercial now center of West Africa. This is Lagos and you're all welcome. I welcome you warmly on behalf of the vice president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria who combines Ogun and Lagos together as home. And on behalf of the governor of Lagos State, Mr. Babajide Olushola Sonwolu also. And as a princess in Lagos, I welcome you to Lagos. The vice president sent warm greetings to everyone and would have loved to be here today to welcome this very innovative idea to Lagos and to Nigeria in general. Because he has more of other United Nations programs which has to be there physically. So he has asked me to come. So I have to rush from Abuja this morning to join you here. Apology for being late. You know the flight schedule. So I am delighted to be here at this launch of uh, launching of mobile healthcare facility by Alpha Med Healthcare and Management Services Limited. I applaud this company for this for harnessing their scientific and technological expertise and making available this solution and facilities for use in Nigeria, which will go a long way in supporting Nigeria's journey towards 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. As you are aware, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, joined 192 other world leaders at the 78th section of the United Nations General Assembly on the 25th of September, 2015 in New York to endorse the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, which translate to 17 interconnected goals, 169 targets, and 232 indicators, which the former name is transforming our world. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development envision the global world and the Alpha Med Healthcare Management System Limited initiative have appropriately captured this SDG Goal 9, SDG Sustainable Development Goal 9, which aims at build resilient infrastructure, promote industrialization, and foster innovation across sectors, including health, innovation, infrastructure, and new skills technology development. We therefore help drive our SDGs, including SDG 3 which target 3.86 to achieve universal health coverage, a global priority important to the attainment of 2030 agenda, especially in low and medium income countries. The universal health coverage is defined as ensuring all people have access to the needed key promotive, preventive, curative, and rehabilitative health services of good quality at an affordable cost without the risk of financial hardship linked, linked to paying for healthcare services. It therefore intend to improve the quality, equity, and access to healthcare services for all in line with the SDGs principle and mantra of leaving no one behind. It will interest you to note that Nigeria is committed to the attainment of universal health coverage and the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development as demonstrated by the president launch, launching of the Basic Healthcare Provision Fund, which was done on the 8th of January, 2019, to accelerate the attainment of universal health coverage in Nigeria. As a nation, Nigeria is making unwavering efforts through the relevant ministry, department, and even agencies of government to improve both 
geographical and financial access to quality healthcare services through aggressive healthcare infrastructure, development and expansion horizontally and vertically. Of this social healthcare insurance coverage, we special focus on the rural poor, rural, poor women and children to better its health outcomes. The Alpha Med Healthcare and Management Services Limited Mobile Healthcare Facility has the potential to support the government efforts towards transforming medical diagnostics and reduce barrier to healthcare access in Nigeria. I must emphasize here that the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development encourages businesses, investment, and private sector full participation and enhancement to accelerate the sustainable development goals, implementation, and attainment as its sector has the capacity to be a key driver as development actor towards achieving the objective of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. I want to use this opportunity to commend our partner and friend, Alpha Med Healthcare and Management Services Limited, and to encourage other stakeholders to come and invest in Nigerian market, both local and foreign partners. As we launched the private sector advisory group in February 17, 2017, for government to work the private sector to enhance quality healthcare services in Nigeria, not only in the healthcare service, education and other sectors. So we, you, uh, Alpha Med Healthcare Management Services is welcome to Nigeria to partner with government of Nigeria and ensuring that private sector working in the public sector will add value to the development of Nigeria and healthcare system of Nigerian people. My office, the Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President on SDGs will continue to work even more closely with the private sector at all levels to accelerate SDG implementation in Nigeria, especially at this decade of action for attainment of 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Lastly, I will want to once again congratulate the leadership of the Alpha Med Healthcare and Management Services Limited for successful launching of this solution, the mobile healthcare facility to complement government efforts towards improving access to quality healthcare services in Nigeria. Thank you and God bless you. God bless Alpha Med Management Services. God bless Lagos State and God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Princess. She mentioned she's a princess from Lagos, so I hope you all feel very welcome by royalty. Thank you so much, Madam, for that keynote address. Now, let's get right into the meat of the matter. We have invited everyone here to appreciate this innovation that potentially could change the whole landscape with respect to healthcare service in Nigeria. So this is a time we really need your attention, so you better appreciate what this is all about. And so to make, do a product presentation, I'd like to now welcome the Group Managing Director of Alpha Mead, Engineer Femi Akintunde, as he takes us through the modular healthcare facility. Please put your hands together for him as he steps forward. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And um, I like to stand on existing protocol so that we do everything um, timely today. Um, there are three sections of what I would do. First is I'd like you to watch a small video clip to give you a better appreciation of what we are trying to do, the magnitude of it, and the relevance of the solution to Nigeria and to Africa. One thing we believe is that it's only Africans that can understand African problems and can prefer African solutions to the problems. 
but we need a very good understanding of the global best practices available out there, which we can apply to solve these problems. This is what our family is all about. We get best practices from all over the world. We apply it to our own situation and we believe that is the solution. The days of cut and paste is over. The days of building massive infrastructure on healthcare to take care of people. We've seen the challenges we have in terms of application adaptability. So we've come up with something that we believe is appropriate for our current level of development. And as things evolve, we will keep evolving and build things from ground up. We don't want to run faster than our legs. So ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to listen to this short clip as the first one. Then secondly, I'll do a small presentation to tell you in what ways you can acquire this. Because if we talk about it, we need to let you know how to get it and how we're going to deploy it. And lastly, part of the solutions that we'll be talking about, because it's a digitally enabled facility, part of the solutions is that we want you to see how the problem of people leaving Nigeria, because they say they don't have enough facilities to work with, are doctors. They are the best anywhere they go in the world. They are the best. We want to see how the problem of logistic constraints, we've lost so many precious lives just because somebody is sick, because there is no enough attention and timely response. On the way to the hospital, it gives up. I'm sure almost half of us in this room, if not more, would have one or two cases like that. Situation where somebody has not been diagnosed early enough, the situation has escalated because there's no closeness of medical facility. He has to leave Badagri to come to Bagara General Hospital. That's a hell of a distance. You will see how this has solved that problem. So some of the Nigerians in diaspora said, we want to continue to work for Nigeria. We left because we were not well equipped. But this thing you guys have introduced will bring us back home. I still have my mom, my dad in the village. Anything that will make me support Nigeria, we're there. We're going to be talking to a teleconsult, one of the people that have been registered. Close to a thousand doctors registered all over the world and registered in Nigeria. NMA press, I mean, uh, members are already connected to that platform. So one of the doctors that I will talk today live, I will call somebody from the audience to volunteer. You will speak with him. Don't tell him your problem. Just tell him that you have a dick. And he will tell you what to do. You will interact with him real life as if you are standing in front of a doctor. But beyond that, when we do the facility tour, you will see how the test will be done, how x-ray will be taken, how the laboratory that can do up to 600, if not close to 1,000 different analysis will be done and digitally transmitted to anybody anywhere. So we are saying, doctor in Bagada, we don't have to have 100 doctors going all over the place. If you have 10 doctors in Bagada, they can serve almost 20 local governments from their office here. So we're trying to solve many problems at the same time. So you will see that as well. And you will now finally see the physical facility, which is at the back here, when it is officially commissioned and opened. This is the first of its type in the whole of Africa. If Nigeria doesn't do if Nigeria doesn't do it, which other country should do it? We are very proud. We are very proud, we are very happy that we are starting it in Nigeria. Afamid has operation in 10 other countries, and the board of those countries are already asking, especially Ghana. Hello? Yeah. So once we finish with Nigeria, we are on our way to Ghana to launch the same thing. So let's listen to the clip and we'll take it one at a time. Thank you very much.
Did you know? According to Nigeria's Health Facility Register 2019, I'll come back. Nigeria has 40,345 registered hospitals and clinics to serve a 201 million population. This puts the ratio at an estimated 5,000 Nigerians in one healthcare facility. Furthermore, the World Health Organization reports only a quarter of Nigeria's primary health facilities have more than 25% the minimum equipment package. Little wonder Nigeria is set to shoulder an estimated 10% of the global diseased burden. A situation USAID reported can be attributed to the persistent low access to quality healthcare facilities and health workers, especially in rural communities. The challenge with quality healthcare in Nigeria is not just about inadequate finance from government and the private sector. Speed to set up the facilities, inadequate health workers, lack of access to the required medical equipment and the dispersed nature of the nation's population are also key hindrances to quality and affordable health care. The challenge for stakeholders and keen observers has always been, how can Nigeria rapidly increase access to quality health care for all, build confidence in its health care sector and reduce its huge loss to medical tourism? With a strategy to work with government and the private sector, Alpha Mead Healthcare and Management Services, AMHS, is innovating possibilities that would make quality healthcare accessible to all. One of such innovations is the Modular Healthcare Facilities, MHF. The MHF is a customized, mobility-enhanced, prefabricated porter cabin with detachable modules equipped with state-of-the-art clinical and diagnostic equipment. One of the 17 sustainable development goals of the United Nations is SDG3, which aims to achieve universal health coverage and equitable access to health care for all men and women. For us at AlphaMed, this aligns well with our corporate mission and brand promise. We care. We set up AlphaMed Healthcare Management Services. AMHLs to identify and provide solutions in critical areas of the healthcare value chain, which includes laboratory analysis and diagnostic services, technology application, trained manpower, and quality management system for efficient delivery of quality healthcare in Nigeria and across the continent of Africa. The MHF product is an innovative solution of the company that seeks to improve accessibility to affordable and quality health care for all at any location. With the MHF, setting up a state-of-the-art health care facility anywhere is now a matter of days. It is not only easy to set up, the MHF enables cost-efficient health care operations powered by solar, easy to transport, connected by technology, and driven by efficiency. From inside of the MHF, a patient anywhere in Nigeria can be diagnosed, have the results reviewed by a medical professional anywhere in the world, consult with a doctor through its telemedicine facilities, and access medications through the nearest registered pharmacy. The MHF is where functionality and technology meet to make quality healthcare accessible. This facility will have a huge impact on the health sector because of its usefulness goes beyond fast and accurate diagnosis. The MHF is a compact healthcare facility that addresses most needs at the primary, secondary, and tertiary healthcare level. With MHF, quality healthcare can now be at the doorstep of every Nigerian. The modular healthcare facility is fully packaged with a lot of advanced technology equipment. We have with it the picture archiving and communication system, enterprise electronic medical records, and telehealth infrastructure. With the picture archiving and communication system, all the investigations that are done at the radiology center will be immediately archived transmitted to a remote radiologist who will review this test, report the results, 
and send it back to the center in the real time so that we can give it back to the patients. With the enterprise medical record system, we can capture all the data of the patient so that the entire facility is a paperless environment. Every record of the patients are fully digitized and they are available in the system, fully backed up and can be assessed at any time that they are required. With the telehealth infrastructure, patients can see any doctor in any part of the globe. The best of the doctors that are not available in this country can be contacted in real time. They can talk to the patient and provide advice on the type of ailments that they are suffering from. So boundary is no longer there. Anywhere in the world, from Cape to Cairo, from Botswana to Australia, doctors that have the best skill can be made available to the patients anywhere they are, so that we can give Nigerians the best of medical care that they can get if they travel out of this country. The MHF has so many unique benefits for us as a country, particularly at this time, uh, where government is looking to focus a lot on improved healthcare systems. So whether it's the government or private businesses or not-for-profit organizations, they can take advantage of the many benefits that the, the MHF brings. Firstly, for government, this can be deployed even into uh, different communities. It can be used to um, to supplement the existing healthcare facilities. For private businesses and corporations, this can serve as a form of corporate social responsibility, and they can seed this into the different communities where they are operating. We also have different camps, uh, like you have military camps, construction sites, you have uh, camps for internally displaced persons. The modular healthcare facility can be placed in these camps as a means of providing quality diagnostic services for people to access quality health care, get the proper diagnosis and also get the right treatment because they got the diagnosis right the first time. The MHF can be used by different sectors in our economy, from the government to private sector, to the small and medium scale enterprises, and everybody who has interest in investing in health care MHF is fully packaged and ready for use. For government, it can be deployed in all the primary healthcare centers that we have across the country, where the infrastructure are clearly lacking. MHF can be used to support the systems at those centers, and doctors can remotely attend to patients after the laboratory and radiology investigations have been done for them. If you have a hospital and you do not have capacity at the moment to set up a laboratory or radiology unit of your own, we can lease an MHF to you and you can own it after you have paid the money little by little over a period of time. Contact AMHS on plus 234-700-25. 7426323 or mhf at alphamead.com. Modular healthcare facilities, making quality healthcare accessible. Thank you very much. Um, I'll just briefly talk through a few things. The modular healthcare facility. Doctors say that accurate diagnosis is more than half cured. One of the biggest problems we have that medical doctors can also attest to is not having enough resources to diagnose medical issue properly. 
So what the MHF combines is both diagnostic service facilities and also clinical support through the telehealth. So it's end-to-end -end in a compact modular system, which you will see physically today. I'd like to start with the word of my group chairman. You know, you get, you get charged from somewhere. Uh, this, this, uh, this is a board with a difference. They really challenge us every time. And we all listen to his address this morning. He says, the challenges of our healthcare sector are not unknown to us. So that's why I'm not going to go into the, all the problems. We all know it. But from whatever lens one chooses to view these challenges, whether financial, personnel, equipment, systems, or technology, perhaps the most disquieting is that of access to quality health care. That is the biggest problem. And access is from two dimensions. Accessibility, medical doctor, the patients, and the patients to the doctors. On both sides, there are challenges. In Africa, we have this problem across all the countries. So how do we solve it? Is it by building all those large, very gigantic medical centers that we have not been able to maintain due to difficulties in infrastructure? that is going to cost us so much money that currently our government cannot afford. What is the way out? How do we connect the dots? These are the key components of the solution we have brought together. It has laboratory services covering the various analysis under hematology, clinical chemistry, microbiology, and of course, fibrotomy. You talk of the radiology services, ultrasound scanning, digital x-ray, and CT scan, and MRI. The technology offering covers the telehealth and the teleradiology aspect. Radiology Information System, which is RIS, the Picture Archiving and Communication System, the Teleconsultation, e-pharmacy, and Electronic Record System. I'm sure many times we've gone to hospitals and they say they are looking for your file. And it takes somebody who is sick, sitting and waiting for them to look for the record. Sometimes they don't find it. And sometimes they find it, one or two sheets are missing. The doctor can flip through and then he will diagnose you based on what he could see. All these are over. There are utility support systems. We, we envision the fact that this facility may have to be deployed to locations that are not the city centers, where we have power readily available. So it's equipped with solar system that produces power into a power bank, a battery, and is able to connect with the internet services to transmit whatever analysis or results that you have to the doctor that will attend to you who doesn't have to be physically present with you where you are being assessed. We also have one that is an option of a biodigester system it's a package that translates waste to power because we're looking for different sources to generate energy. So as people use the toilet, it processes it, it converts it to power. It's a module which can be attached. It also has very good broadband internet connection, but we've made it such that anywhere telephone service is available, you can use this facility. So you, this, when you use large masts everywhere, it's over. This project took us about six months 
of intensive research and development, analyzing, refining, looking at African problem, looking at Nigerian problem, saying what else do we need to include to make this compact and easy to deploy. You also see wheelchair access has been provided. Electronic access control system, CCTV coverage is all there. So this is a typical package of the system that you will see today. Like, we, like the name comes, is Modular Healthcare Facility, MHF. So they come in modules because it must be easy to transport. So, and it's also scalable. If you take a location, they may start with what we have MHF-1, which is the most basic. MHF-1 basically comprises of the reception and admin area where the patient will be attended to. You could have done your booking online or you just walk in there. You'll be processed, all your details taken, and then it has the laboratory. The laboratory is just all the basic laboratory analysis as I've explained before. That's MHF-1. That's the smallest module. It has only two modules. These two modules, you just put it on the trailer. So if I get another from Adamawa tomorrow, two modules on the trailer, and off it goes. Thank God, the railway system is now coming on stream. It even makes life easier for us. So I just take it to the railway station, put it there, and then it can go to any part of the country. The second module is MHF2. MHF2 will mirror almost what you have in a secondary healthcare facility, like a secondary, uh, uh, like a second. In some places, I think some companies or uh, groups, they also call it comprehensive primary healthcare. So that is the second one. That's the one we have built. We don't want to build the small one. We don't want to build the, the large one. So what you'll be seeing today is MHF2. MHF2 has the full component of MF1 plus the digital X-ray system. Okay. By the way, there is also the ultra scan that is part of the radiology services that are being offered. Then we have MHF3 for tertiary healthcare and some teaching hospitals. The whole idea is that if you have the hospital running and you feel, oh, we are expecting money or we're going to do this and it's not ready, the beauty of this is that we can will this for you, can use it for maybe one year, two years, three years, four years, when you have your facility, we move it out. I can take from one hospital to another. That's part of the mobility and stability aspect of it. So, this one has the CT scan. This one has the CT scan included. Then we have the Rolls Royce MHF Advance. That one has the MRI. Okay. We have one MRI currently at Luth, that's Lagos University Chin Hospital. That's there and some other equipment. We have the bone densitometer, we have CT scan, we have the auto scan, we have, I mean, all the full range of radio diagnosis services, they are there, equipped and being operated by Alphamit and our partner. So that's uh, JNCI. The project today was conceived and brought to where it is with the support of one of the best in the industry, the healthcare industry, that worked with us. Uh, that's uh, GE, and I have the general manager for Africa here present. Uh, uh, they've been part of this uh, development with us. Because the last thing you want to do is to deploy equipment that 
you cannot adequately support. Part of what we've done, even the specification of the digital equipment, is such that when you move it, it's as rugged, it's as stable as you can find it anywhere. So issue of maintainability and operability, we've taken care of it in our specifications. What are the values and benefits to various stakeholders? I'll just quickly tell you about that. Patients and public, we can now access more people for good health care without all the constraints of, oh, I'm not living in Lagos. Okay, you can be in your village. If your representative in the House of Assembly, and I'm happy this is one of the reasons why we got the honorable uh, speaker, ably represented by our good friend, uh, Honorable Rotimi Agusoye. We call him Aroti, uh, is here present. And uh, we're happy to also have uh, our princess, our mommy here, who is also very, very passionate about the sustainable development goal. And we believe that if we are going to get health care to where it should be, to everybody, we need something more agile. And that is what this is delivering. So the public will have better access. Government will be able to provide health care as a good social service now. The private health care business owners, there are lots of doctors who finish from school who are doing practice. They have hospitals. These hospitals are ill-equipped. And what we're saying is that you have the solution and you don't have to build everything by yourself. Build your hospital, run your hospital. You can take this on a lease and pay in uh, little by little over a period of time. And then you get the service, which you don't have to cough out large capital outlay to, 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 to support your operation. The public hospitals, we have a lot of government hospitals. We know the condition our government hospitals are. I mean, I've seen some. And you're asking yourself, what is the difference between a government hospital in Nigeria and a government hospital in the United Kingdom? You walk into some hospitals and you feel like you are walking into a five-star hotel. You walk into some hospitals and you walk in with some disease and you come out with five. How do we remove that kind of narrative and change it? We have to find a solution that connects properly with our current level of development. And we believe these are areas we can support and change the face of healthcare delivery, even in government hospitals. Healthcare academic institutions. If a university has its fund to build a standard hospital, even to renovate the ones we have now, we know for how long our doctors have been on strike. Most of the time, what they are fighting for is not just their salary. They are saying, give us facilities, tools to work with. And government is saying our resources are limited. So what do we do? We are saying with MHF 3 or MHF Advance, we're already doing this at Luth, by the way, because it's a teaching hospital. We've given all the equipment they need to work with. So we're saying with MHF 3 or Advance, we can teach our students better. Some of them, all through their program, they've never Thing called MRI. They've never. But we are saying, can bring it now. Who else? Comes an emergency response center. Accident locations. All we need to do as government is to say, let's position one at different locations along the highway. And if there is an accident, you don't need to be last large hospital. So you can have something closest and you take the patient there and they will be attended to. We have the IBP camps. You know the number of people that are in those locations. They are Nigerians like us. We need to take care of them. You don't know whether that baby born to that poor man or woman. Maybe that's the next Nigerian president in another 10, 15 years time. If he dies today, you have just wasted a whole generation of leaders. We're talking of professionals, the doctors, the nurses. I can just imagine the day we opened our center at Luth. 
the excitement on people's faces was unimaginable. Some of them came to us. They said, this section is Ajegule. Sorry for that. That was what they said. They said, this part is America. I'm like, what are you saying? Because me, I've never used, I've never used the place before. But they said, if you know what this place used to look like before you people came, it's a different ball game entirely. Those are the kind of things we love to do as a family. We want to change game. We want to change the narrative. We don't want to even know where you are coming from. We know where we want to take you to. And that's our job. Another group of people that benefit from this is the development organization, the NGOs. A lot of them, they fund, they fund programs. We mobilized a project to Maiduguri about um, four weeks ago. Um, it's been funded by W. WHF, am I correct? WHS, World Health, the project will mobilize to Maduguri. What? WFP, yeah. So we have quite a lot of them in the country. They want to bring money, but they are not sure how this money will be spent. So they are looking for solutions that we connect with their funding. We are saying as Nigerians, if we demonstrate and showcase this, more foreign investment can come to our space because we will give them confidence that money is safe. Corporate organizations, a lot of them do CSR just to make sure that wherever they are operating, the community there is also well. Nigerians in diaspora, oh, the number of emails and calls that we've received in less than 72 hours when we put this on the social media that we're having this event, we receive over 6,000, 6,000 views. People saying, wow, you mean this is going to happen in Nigeria? We say, yes, it's live. And is it a design? We say, no, it's not a design. It has been built. And if you have enough resources, you can fly down and come and see it. Live today, so people are going to experience it. We're going to walk through it, okay? And lastly, United Nations and the world community in all. The SDG is one of the ways that the world is trying to come together and to make the world a more sustainable place to live. And we believe that this solution is going to connect well with it. We have been focusing on SDG 3, but when Madam SDG herself has just lectured us today that it is actually SDG 9 and SDG 3. So I quickly wrote it down that, ah, I didn't see that before because this is infrastructure. This is infrastructure. Infrastructure doesn't necessarily mean something that will be too heavy, but something that works for us. This is bridging infrastructure gap in the healthcare space in addition to providing healthcare. So how do you get it? What are the modes of acquisition? You can buy outright. Just buy it and tell us where we take it to. We'll connect it, it's plug and play and it starts operating. Because everything, all the x-ray system, the uh, red lining, everything has been done. So you just take it and then we put it there and the hospital can start operating. You can lease to own. What we've done, and I'm sure there are quite a number of them in the room today, we've been receiving calls from different financial institutions who say, listen, we've seen this. This one, as long as it is physical, we can touch it, we can feel it, we can put money behind it. So what we're saying is that even when government wants to do it as a project, we can do it in such a way you use it to also empower people economically. Identify one good healthcare practitioner in that village that you want to fund. Bring him to Lagos. We have a training school. We're going to train them on entrepreneurial skill of how they're going to run a successful clinic or hospital. We're going to connect them digitally to a network. We have a 24 7 call center where calls can go into. Your money can never be lost. Every transaction that happened on it is digitally recorded. You can see it from anywhere how they are making money and how the money is being spent. So there is a hospital management system that accompanies this. So it is so transparent. I mean, this is hospital at best, the best you can take it to, to international standard. Because very little of manner thing happened with this facility. So the least to own is that 
You can lease it if you're a private businessman, you have a hospital and you know you don't have these facilities, just take one, lease it. We've solved the problem of funding for you. You pay us over five years, all right? And what you pay per month is not the thing that will break the bank for you. Because we've done the scenario analysis, we've done the economics, and based on the traffic we expect and the pricing, what you will be making in terms of your return on investment and your profitability is good enough to pay what we're asking you to pay on a monthly basis. We've done the modeling ourselves. Onsite deployment, we're saying if you have a location, we can rent a location and position there, and we will operate it and maintain it for you. Contract operation, you can buy and you say, look, I don't want to operate it myself. Can you guys come and operate and maintain it for me? We have the O and M contracts agreement. We can sign that with you. It's your own, but we'll send professionals to run it for you. And then we agree on the management fee you pay. And lastly, we're open to JV, joint venture, and we're also open to PPP for government who feel that they want to do it, but you want to go the PPP route. Uh, and um, it's something that will interest uh, the Nigerian government that this is a way out to really, really push healthcare to as many locations as possible. But the, the list to own also come with a moratorium because we are correct that you will not start making profit from day one. So we even allow you a holiday period of like three months. When you run, you make money, you accumulate your cash before you start repaying the debt back. We know our problem. We are Africa, and we are Africa. We know the problem of accessing funds by SMEs. This is not something that we should debate for too long. It's one of the reasons why the businesses are not thriving, not only in healthcare, generally, but we have solved that problem. And we are still solving it because we we'll continue to get more engagement, more financial institutions are talking to us, and we'll continue to even see how to bring that cost down lower and lower, because the lower it is, the better it is to achieve the objective that we sell for ourselves. So you will see some of my colleagues wearing uh, white, um, some on Scrum. You, this is the other form, basically to take your details uh, um, about the hospital, where you want it to go, the location where it's going. Next. It will, you will choose which of the MDF you're looking for, Based on what it offers, you will see all the tick. Lastly, you will see a um, question about your timeline for delivery. When do you want it? Three to Within three months, that's fast track. Uh, and I'm sure some of our equipment um, manufacturers will have some stock available. Three to six months, six to 12 months, or after one year. Even if it's after one year, we can start working with you now to prepare the specification, to do the financial modeling and everything. We will send our consultants, they will look at your area, they will take data. We have already done initial analysis. I told you this is a 36 months R&D project. We've done an analysis, engaging some consultants to scan Nigeria for us. And we have data of patronage, patient traffic at different locations. So if we have to talk to you, if we didn't cover your area before, we can do extensive and then help you to look at the business model and be able to uh, support your rollout. Acquisition, sorry, go back please. Acquisition options, you tell us what you want. Whether you want to lease, you want to buy, you want a JV, you want a PPP, our business development department will sit down with you to analyze which of the options. And of course, due diligence is involved because we are dealing with funny partners. It's a rigorous process, but you have nothing to worry about if you have all it takes, including the competencies to own a business. Because this solves just a problem, it also solves social problem, and it also solves economic environment problem. So we are thinking that this one coming stream, you can choose any of the options to acquire this. I think that's the end of the presentation. Thank you very much. So where we are now, um, it's time for me to, um, because we have the laboratory, we have the radiology, I mean, the uh, diagnosis section. 
but I've said that the telemedicine section, we want to demonstrate it here. And I don't want you to think that it's a pre-recorded because I can call myself and tell the doctor what I want. But what I want is I'll need somebody who is a vol can volunteer. Uh, you don't need to tell them the correct thing. Just tell them something. They will just, you know, just the communication and the engagement. You will see how you engage, how you interact with the doctor as if it's real life. So can I have somebody who can volunteer uh, to, okay. Oh, Alaji, come up. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start for him. Let's encourage him. <laughs> um, so Elijah is here. He has just uh, the the registration process would have been done. So I'm assuming he has been registered. All his details have been taken. Is address everything because part of what service this offers is that after they've done tests for him, we would have sent it to the doctor. Everything happens within the same period, right? The doctor will ask him a few questions. There's somebody who can be with him in the room, but if he wants to be alone, it's a room. You will see it when we go to do inspection now. A nurse, the, one of the people who will be managing the center will be with him, will take him through and relate. All the things have been done, recorded, the doctor has received it, he has read the report, he has interpreted. So he wants to give allergy feedback and tell allergy what he needs to do and prescribe medicine to him. Another beauty of this is that we are onboarding pharmaceutical services. Pharmac I mean, pharmacies have been onboarded now um, all over the country. And I think we have a chain already uh, that numbers over 100. So when Elijah gets his prescription, he will have the option to say, I want to go and collect it. They will locate the pharmacy next, very close to his house. He can also choose to say, let them bring the medicine to my house. You just pay extra. So this is what is going to happen now. But we won't have Elijah here today, but you will see how it's going to happen. So, which of the doctors are we calling? Let, let's get US. He has to come here. Okay, so you have to go to the teleconsult room so that he can see you. So, Elijah is in the consult room now. He wants to talk to his doctor. Uh, where is the doctor we are talking to? Is it the Calabar? Um, Kule from Calabar? Okay. It could have been Bagada. It could have been anywhere. Let me also explain something. The way the Transmission, all the digital transmissions are fully encoded. So in terms of data privacy, nothing, nobody can bug it, okay? So everything happens on the platform and the transmissions and the communications are all encoded. Because we didn't pre-register, The challenge is that we are trying to transmit from our teleconsult room to this room. So um, give us a bit more time.
Sorry, they've been waiting for a long time because we didn't start in time. I think uh, the man has gone on break. So they're going to call another person. That's why you should not go in late for appointment. This one doesn't allow it. When they give you an appointment for a time, you have to be there. They've been waiting for, and you know, time in America now is, is in the night. So the gentleman for us. Maybe while we are waiting the connection, I can take one or, one or two questions because I know there will be people who have burning questions in their mind. Um, just one or two while they are trying to set up there. Whatever they, we get, then we will stop. So does anybody have any question to ask regarding what we've seen so far? We will soon go for the facility tour. Questions? Okay. Do we have a second microphone, please? Alaji, please, you can sit down. They will soon connect you. Yeah, the question. Who wants to ask the question? Two. Okay, bringing the microphone to him now. Okay, okay. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Jesutomi Akomolafe. I work with the Guardian newspaper. Sir, in, as regarding as regarding affordability of this facility, when it comes to uh, the management and other persons in the rural area. Of the medical service. Yes, yes, of the medical service. How much? Do they have to pay to access this facility? And uh, what what are plan, what are the plans to ensure that uh, these persons are captured in terms of they are aware that these things are here? Do is there any community sensitization that uh, that are in place in that regard? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. There are two questions there. First is the issue of affordability. Let's make it clear. Health care comes at a cost. But this is where we have to look at what are the models being used all over the world to fund health care. Simply the insurance scheme, right? Insurance scheme. So there are different options. We cannot prof we cannot give. We can't give all the answers here, but I'm sure when we start the engagement, different parties will come to us with different ideas. Our job is to sit down with you to analyze the requirement, but linking to what you have said is the question of, oh, how does it compare to me building my hospital? I can tell you that issue of building your hospital or this one, the difference is less than of the cost is the brick and mortar versus the modular facility. If you build a hospital, you still equip it with digital S3. You still put laboratory Hello? services there. You still put everything there. Apart from the digital system, every other thing you would do for a hospital, you would do it. 
And the cost of the brick and mortar is less than 10, 15% of everything we are talking about. So in terms of comparison, I would say that if you want to have a well-equipped facility like this, the cost difference is not significant between the brick and mortar. But the extra advantage this gives you is that you can carry your hospital inside your pocket and take it to anywhere you want to have it. All right? In terms of awareness and sensitization, I think we are, this is starting, this is the first day that we are launching this. I believe once we live here, the issue of more people being aware of it will increase and government will work with us to let us know how they want to deploy this and how we can work with them to make this go as fast as it can. But I can tell you one of the benefits of this is also that there are funding organizations that are ready to put funds into this also as investment program. All right. So this desensitization will happen. Are we ready now? Okay, yeah, let's go. Uh, the patient has gone, no? <laughs> Do we have somebody else who is ready to? I like you, your doctor is back. Hello, Hello, doctor. Hello, doctor. Can you hear me? Yes. Please, can you hear me, please? Please, can you hear me, please? Doctor, can you hear us? Hello? Hello, doctor, please. Hello, doctor. Doctor, can you hear us? Yeah, it's, she's hearing, but we can't hear her. She's nodding. Hello? Okay, hold on. Okay. Hello, doctor. Hello, how are you all? Fine, fine. Okay. Mm, I'm not. So, um... I'm calling from uh, United States. I am one of the practitioners over there. Okay. I'm so glad to join you all today um, you. and to um, help you all uh, establish what you're starting. Okay. So I'm open to help okay. um, talk to your patients. And at the same time, I can send prescriptions to them. OK, so OK, Mo. So I'm motivated and eager to see what is going on and to help you move it forward. Please, I'm a patient. Please, I want you to prescribe based on my alignment. Please, uh, I want you to diagnose something. Uh, please. I'm a, um, say that again. I say I'm a patient. I want you to, to prescribe what I can use based on what's my complaint. Okay. Um, what's your complaint? My complaint what's is, going on? My complaint is that um having ulcer, please. Okay, you have ulcer. Yes, ma. And I okay. So what kind of symptoms have you been having? No, I normal I can normally I do I normally eat very late due to the nature of my job. I'm always very busy at work. So from there, I now develop ulcer. 
but I want something that can cure that other very, very fast because I don't normally eat, you know, what I normally eat there, uh, it's beans and other things. And what I like to eat is beans. And they say I cannot eat beans do because I have the ulcer. Okay. So I, so I want you to pre, to give me some medicine that I can use that can eat that my ulcer very fast, ma. Okay. All right, I definitely can do that. For you. Uh, okay. And uh, when I send that um, prescription, it's very important you finish it. Okay. And um, finish the pack, and at the end of um, taking out the prescription. You should be able to have um, a clearance on the author and go on with your okay. um, your life and your business without having um, issues and symptoms anymore. Okay, ma. So I'll be glad to send your prescription. Okay, okay, ma. All right. Thank you very much, doctor. We Thank really you. appreciate your time. Okay, you can. All right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So let's let's give it a round. So it's just, um, it's assuming that a lot of tests and analysis has already taken place. We've already transmitted to the doctor. Doctor has read this report. He has analyzed it and it can re she can relate with what the issues are, but she still wanted to hear from him and be able to interact. The interaction can be longer than that, but for the sake of time, we had to keep it uh, very short. So I think this is, this is it. Uh, we now are at the point where the managing director of um, our healthcare uh, division, the Alphamid Healthcare Management Services, Mr. Kunle. Okay, so I, I think I'm not trained to do that part of the work. So let me hand over back to the MC. I finished my part. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Akindu. Very well done. I think we've all been enlightened. We've all been enlightened. It's clear what the offering is. And as he mentioned, the order, the order books uh, will be moving, will be moving through the room. We would like to hear your expression of interest at, at least concerning this innovative solution that is clearly able to revolutionize the the delivery of medical and health services here in Nigeria. Before we move forward, I just want to recognize the general, the group managing director of Ibile Holdings, who is with us today, Mr. Abiodun Omokomo. Thank you very much, sir. And of course, earlier, Mr. Akitude mentioned the GM West Africa for GE Healthcare, who is with us as well, Mr. George Uduku. Thank you so much for showing up today. Much appreciated. So the partnership is working and we look forward to receiving your orders. Uh, before, as we move forward now, we'd just like to take a few goodwill messages and we'll be starting with the, on the Commissioner for Health from Ogun State, Dr. Tomi Koka. So if, if Dr. Tomi Koka could please step forward to deliver her goodwill message. Thank you very much. We hope it will be relatively short as time is far spent, but we really appreciate your time. Thank you. The senior special advisor to the president on SDG, all government dignitaries, the management of Alpha Mead, and may I stand on all estab uh, the already established protocol, please. Um, as has been said several times this morning, the vision of the president of Nigeria alongside other nations is the universal health coverage with the provision of qualitative, affordable, and accessible healthcare to every citizen of Nigeria. The Alpha Mead, um, modular healthcare facility is a laudable innovation which will move Nigeria healthcare system into the 21st century by addressing the major challenges which I have observed that currently faces the Nigeria healthcare system, which is the dilapidated infrastructure, 
aged equipment, lack of human resource for health, the lack of data and epileptic power supply. With the modular healthcare facility, we have a one-stop solution to all these challenges. And you will agree with me that the global crisis, which has occurred in the last uh, 14 to 16 months, has actually ex um, exposed the vulnerability of our healthcare system in Nigeria. And there is no better time to build resilient and sustainable healthcare system to actually respond to future outbreaks. We don't know how soon they will come, but surely they will come. I have no doubt that the MHF is a disruptive innovation that will change the landscape of the healthcare system in Nigeria. For the betterment of Nigerians, and in no time, this would lead to the improvement in our national indices from the bottom three, and hopefully the entire Africa as well, as you spread your tentacles. I wish Alpha Mead success in this laudable initiative. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Commission, for your time and, of course, for that message. Much appreciated. We'd like to, if you, as I did just request, um, have you stay on the stage as we take a few photographs. We won't take that opportunity now. I do know that some people are already having their meals, but I would disturb you a little bit as I call you on the stage, starting with the Senior Special Assistant to the President on the SDGs. Madam SDG, if you will please kindly join her on stage. We'll also like to invite the representative of the, the Speaker of the House, Honorable Rotimi Agusoe. I know he, Agusoe, he, I know he was in the room just now. Okay, he may have left, okay. All right, also the chairman of the Alpha Mid Group, Mr. Sumono, if you will please join us. Mr. Kintude, if you will also join us, thank you so much. Um, Kule Omidiora, please, if you'll join us as well. And of course, engineer Dada Thomas, who's also a board member, please, if you can join them all on the stage to take a quick photograph. Yes, and also the chairman of the Alpha Mid Healthcare. Thank you very much. If our cameraman will help quickly, thank you so much. We'll shortly be going to see this live for ourselves and we'll try and do that in an orderly fashion. As you can imagine, the modular healthcare facility cannot accommodate us all at the same time. So the ushers will be directing us as to how we'll do that. Thank you very much. I'd like to invite a few more people to join them on the stage now. Yes, other board members and EMT, executive management team of Alpha Meet, please, if you can also join them on stage for the photograph. We'd also like to invite Pastor Etua Igodalo, please, if you will join us as well. Please, a round of applause for them as they step forward. And also, Mr. Jide Idris, I believe he's still with us, no? Dr. Idris. And also, Dr. Mrs. Musoro, please, if you can also join us for this. Thank you very much. The stage is large enough to accommodate all.
So we just split it up a little bit. A few people step down. Thank you very much, everyone. As we begin to wind things down, I'd like to now welcome, if she can just join us here again, the chairman of Alpha Meads Healthcare Management Services, Dr. Olufemi Mosuro, as she delivers a few closing remarks, and then we'll move on to the product walkthrough that will be guided by Mr. Kunle Omidiora, who is the managing director, Alpha Meads Healthcare. So Dr. Mosuro. Request to be allowed to start on the existing protocols. And I want to say thank you very much to everybody that has come to view this uh, product. As you have been told, it is a product that was conceived, conceptualized, developed, and birthed locally. And it is our contribution to healthcare development, accessibility to healthcare in Nigeria and Africa as a whole. And I'm sure it's a concept that will be borrowed even by the advanced countries eventually. One thing is to come up with this good product. Another thing is for the product to realize its aspirations, and that depends on all of us that are here. We hope that after going through and seeing what we have to present to you, because the word says seeing is believing. When you see it and you see how it works, we would like you to look at it closely and encourage development of healthcare innovative healthcare solutions in Nigeria by patronizing this product. So, once again, I would like to say thank you very much. And I would like to say we would like to hear from you. Fill the forms, even if you have not yet made up your mind what you want to do. Just fill the form so that we can contact you and you can then tell us when you have decided to do something about it. And the other, other thing we would like, we will request of you is that after seeing it, we would like to have comments because it's a product that is new and will be, uh, we, we will need to do some improvements eventually. So it is the customers who will tell us whether it is suitable for them or whether they need additional things. And that's part of the way you can contribute to the progress and improvement of this product. So with that, I would like to say thank you once again for coming. We hope you've had a nice time with us. Enjoy your lunch. I believe we'll be called table by table to go and inspect. So all of us don't have to go out at the same time. It will be organized so that we don't have a crowding at the site of the uh, mod modular healthcare facility. So we'll go, I, I don't know how many numbers we have at a time. So the, the MC will tell us how many people can go, we'll be called table by table, 
So please continue enjoying yourself, eat your food, and uh, make notes about anything you want to pass on to us, and we hope to hear from you. Thank you very much for coming. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Did you know? Just a moment. Thank you very much, Dr. Musuro. And that's it. We really appreciate everyone showing up. Um, I can see that lunch is being served already. And in terms of order, we will start with the, um, this table and, of course, our special guests, Madam SDG and the Commissioner, will lead us in the inspection of the modular healthcare facility. And then, of course, the ushers will show the rest of us when we can go. So please enjoy your lunch, and we certainly look forward to hearing from you. Um, please take advantage of all the Alpha Meet people in the room. If you have any other questions, Engineer Aki today will be very happy to take your questions. If you want to um, submit that forum, like I mentioned, consider it an expression of interest, and certainly the team will be very happy to engage you after this. We also appreciate those who are joining us online. Thank you so much for participating in this program, and we look forward to receiving your orders. Thank you so much. So enjoy your lunch. And I think very shortly we'll be ushering the first two tables to go and inspect the facility. Thank you. According to Nigeria's Health Facility Register 2019, Nigeria has 40,345 registered hospitals and clinics to serve a 201 million population. This puts the ratio at an estimated 5,000 Nigerians to one healthcare facility. Furthermore, the World Health Organization reports only a quarter of Nigeria's primary health facilities have more than 25% the minimum equipment package. Little wonder Nigeria is set to shoulder an estimated 10% of the global disease burden. A situation USAID reported can be attributed to the persistent low access to quality healthcare facilities and health workers, especially in rural communities. The challenge with quality healthcare in Nigeria is not just about inadequate finance from government and the private sector. Speed to set up the facilities, inadequate health workers, lack of access to the required medical equipment and the dispersed nature of the nation's population are also key hindrances to quality and affordable health care. The challenge for stakeholders and keen observers has always been, how can Nigeria rapidly increase access to quality health care for all, build confidence in its health care sector, and reduce its huge loss to medical tourism? With a strategy to work with government and the private sector, Alpha Mead Healthcare and Management Services AMHS is innovating possibilities that would make quality healthcare accessible to all. One of such innovations is the Modular Healthcare Facilities MHF. The MHF is a customized mobility enhanced prefabricated porter cabin with detachable modules equipped with state of the art clinical and diagnostic equipment. One of the 17 sustainable development goals of the United Nations is SDG3, which aims to achieve universal health coverage and equitable access to health care for all men and women. For us at AlphaMed, this aligns well with our corporate mission and brand promise. We care. We set up AlphaMed Healthcare Management Services, AMHLs to identify and provide solutions in critical areas of the healthcare value chain, which includes laboratory analysis and diagnostic services, technology application, trained manpower, and quality management system for efficient delivery of quality healthcare in Nigeria and across the continent of Africa. The MHF product is an innovative solution of the company that seeks to improve accessibility to affordable and quality health care for all at any location. The MHF, setting up a state-of-the-art health care facility anywhere, is now a matter of days. It is not only easy to set up, the MHF enables cost-efficient health care operations, 
powered by solar, easy to transport, connected by technology, and driven by efficiency. From inside of the MHF, a patient anywhere in Nigeria can be diagnosed, have the results reviewed by a medical professional anywhere in the world, consult with a doctor through its telemedicine facilities, and access medications through the nearest registered pharmacy. The MHF is where functionality and technology meet to make quality healthcare accessible. This facility will have a huge impact on the health sector because of its usefulness goes beyond fast and accurate diagnosis. The MHF is a compact healthcare facility that addresses most needs at the primary, secondary, and tertiary healthcare level. With MHF, quality healthcare can now be at the doorstep of every Nigerian. The modular healthcare facility is fully packaged with a lot of advanced technology equipment. We have with it the picture archiving and communication system, enterprise electronic medical records, and telehealth infrastructure. With the picture archiving and communication system, all the investigations that are done at the radiology center will be immediately archived transmitted to a remote radiologist who will review this test, report the results, and send it back to the center in the real time so that we can give it back to the patients. With the enterprise medical record system, we can capture all the data of the patient so that the entire facility is a paperless environment. Every record of the patients are fully digitized and they are available in the system, fully backed up, and can be assessed at any time that they are required. With the telehealth infrastructure, patients can see any doctor in any part of the globe. The best of the doctors that are not available in this country can be contacted in real time. They can talk to the patient and provide advice on the type of ailments that they are suffering from. So the boundary is no longer there. Anywhere in the world, from Cape to Cairo, from Botswana to Australia, doctors that have the best skill can be made available to the patients anywhere they are, so that we can give Nigerians the best of medical care that they can get if they travel out of this country. MHF has so many unique benefits for us as a country, particularly at this time, uh, where government is looking to focus a lot on improved healthcare systems. So whether it's the government or private businesses or not-for-profit organizations, they can take advantage of the many benefits that the, the MHF brings. Firstly, for government, this can be deployed even into uh, different communities. It can be used to um, to supplement the existing healthcare facilities. For private businesses and corporations, this can serve as a form of corporate social responsibility, and they can seed this into the different communities where they are operating. We also have different camps, uh, like you have military camps, construction sites, you have uh, camps for internally displaced persons. The modular healthcare facility can be placed in these camps as a means of providing quality diagnostic services for people to access quality health care, get the proper diagnosis and also get the right treatment because they got the diagnosis right the first time. The MHF can be used by different sectors in our economy, from the government to private sector to the small and medium scale enterprises and everybody who has interest in investing in health care. MHF is fully packaged and ready for use. For government, it can be deployed in all the primary healthcare centers that we have across the country, where the infrastructure are clearly lacking. MHF can be used to support the systems at those centers, and doctors can remotely attend to patients after the laboratory and radiology investigations have been done for them. If you have a hospital and you do not have capacity at the moment, 
to set up a laboratory or radiology unit of your own. We can lease an MHF to you and you can own it after you have paid the money little by little over a period of time. Contact AMHS on plus 234-700-25-742-6323 or mhf at alphamead.com. Modular healthcare facilities, making quality healthcare accessible. Did you know, according to Nigeria's Health Facility Register 2019, Nigeria has 40,345 registered hospitals and clinics to serve a 201 million population. This puts the ratio at an estimated 5,000 Nigerians to one healthcare facility. Furthermore, the World Health Organization reports only a quarter of Nigeria's primary health facilities have more than 25% the minimum equipment package. Little wonder Nigeria is said to shoulder an estimated 10% of the global disease burden. A situation USAID reported can be attributed to the persistent low access to quality healthcare facilities and health workers, especially in rural communities. The challenge with quality healthcare in Nigeria is not just about inadequate finance from government and the private sector. Speed to set up the facilities, inadequate health workers, lack of access to the required medical equipment and the dispersed nature of the nation's population are also key hindrances to quality and affordable health care. The challenge for stakeholders and keen observers has always been how can Nigeria rapidly increase access to quality health care for all, build confidence in its health care sector and reduce its huge loss to medical tourism. With a strategy to work with government and the private sector, Alpha Mead Healthcare and Management Services, AMHS, is innovating possibilities that would make quality healthcare accessible to all. One of such innovations is the Modular Healthcare Facilities, MHF. The MHF is a customized, mobility-enhanced, prefabricated porter cabin with detachable modules equipped with state-of-the-art clinical and diagnostic equipments. One of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations is SDG3, which aims to achieve universal health coverage and equitable access to health care for all men and women. For us at AlphaMed, this aligns well with our corporate mission and brand promise. We care. We set up our family healthcare management services, AMHLs, to identify and provide solutions in critical areas of the healthcare value chain, which includes laboratory analysis and diagnostic services, technology application, trained manpower, and quality management system for efficient delivery of quality healthcare in Nigeria and across the continent of Africa. The MHF product is an innovative solution of the company that seeks to improve accessibility to affordable and quality health care for all at any location. With the MHF, setting up a state-of-the-art health care facility anywhere is now a matter of days. It is not only easy to set up, the MHF enables cost-efficient health care operations powered by solar, easy to transport, connected by technology, and driven by efficiency. From inside of the MHF, a patient anywhere in Nigeria can be diagnosed, have the results reviewed by a medical professional anywhere in the world, consult with a doctor through its telemedicine facilities, and access medications through the nearest registered pharmacy. The MHF is where functionality and technology meet to make quality healthcare accessible. This facility will have a huge impact on the health sector because of its usefulness goes beyond fast and accurate diagnosis. The MHF is a compact healthcare facility 
that addresses most needs at the primary, secondary, and tertiary healthcare level. With MHF, quality healthcare can now be at the doorstep of every Nigerian. The modular healthcare facility is fully packaged with a lot of advanced technology equipment. We have with it the picture archiving and communication system, enterprise electronic medical records, and telehealth infrastructure. With the picture archiving and communication system, all the investigations that are done at the radiology center will be immediately archived, transmitted to a remote radiologist who will reveal this test, report the results, and send it back to the center in the real time so that we can give it back to the patients. With the enterprise medical record system, we can capture all the data of the patient so that the entire facility is a paperless environment. Every record of the patients are fully digitized and they are available in the system, fully backed up and can be assessed at any time that they are required. With the telehealth infrastructure, patients can see any doctor in any part of the globe. The best of the doctors that are not available in this country can be contacted in real time. They can talk to the patient and provide advice on the type of ailments that they are suffering from. So boundary is no longer there. Anywhere in the world, from Cape to Cairo, from Botswana to Australia, doctors that have the best skill can be made available to the patients anywhere they are, so that we can give Nigerians the best of medical care that they can get in the travel part of this country. The MHF has so many unique benefits for us as a country, particularly at this time, uh, where government is looking to focus a lot on improved healthcare systems. So whether it's the government or private businesses or not-for-profit organizations, they can take advantage of the many benefits that the, the MHF brings. Firstly, for government, this can be deployed even into uh, different communities. It can be used to um, to supplement the existing healthcare facilities. For private businesses and corporations, this can serve as a form of corporate social responsibility, and they can seed this into the different communities where they are operating. We also have different camps, uh, like you have military camps, construction sites, you have uh, camps for internally displaced persons. The modular healthcare facility can be placed in these camps as a means of providing quality diagnostic services for people to access quality health care, get the proper diagnosis and also get the right treatment because they got the diagnosis right the first time. The MHF can be used by different sectors in our economy, from the government to private sector, to the small and medium scale enterprises, and everybody who has interest in investing in health care MHF is fully packaged and ready for use. For government, it can be deployed in all the primary healthcare centers that we have across the country, where the infrastructure are clearly lacking. MHF can be used to support the systems at those centers, and doctors can remotely attend to patients after the laboratory and radiology investigations have been done for them. If you have a hospital and you do not have capacity at the moment to set up a laboratory or radiology unit of your home, we can lease an MHF to you and you can own it after you have paid the money little by little over a period of time. Contact AMHS on plus 234-700-25-742-63. Two three or MHF at alphamead.com. Modular healthcare facilities making quality healthcare accessible.